welcome to another edition of the Social Development Outlook for Tuesday, 28th, 2020. I am your host, Remy Gums. And just to remind you that this program is hosted and produced by the Communications Unit within the Ministry of Social Development, and every single week we try our utmost to showcase the essential performances within this ministry and other related departments. At this point in time, we'll take our first break and be right back. My name is Kervin Wallace. I'm a track and field coach and the PE teacher at the George Level Primary School, encouraging you to stay safe, protect yourself from others, wash your hands often with clean running water and soap. Stay updated by following the Health Promotion Unit on Facebook and Instagram or contact us at 469-8010. And we are back. Mr. Foley, one of our very own local carpenters here on the island of Nevis, afforded us the opportunity to interview him at his shop as he gave us some unique insights in relation to how he goes about doing his craft. Good day viewers, and we are here at a carpenter shop, a veteran carpenter by the name of Foley Prentice, am I right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, Mr. Foley Prentice. Um, I already said that you are a veteran, but I don't know. I said that based on what I have seen with my very own eyes. So I'm going to ask you, how long have you been in the carpentry business? Maybe about 15 to 20 years. Okay, certainly veteran state. And... Where did you get that inspiration from to enter into such a well, profession? I just, just see things and want to do whatever I see. Mm -hmm. So, was that the way you developed the skill? Was it passed on to you? Mm -hmm. Did you I went to some kind it. of course? No, I didn't go no course. I developed on my own. Self-taught? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, how, how, how can one just teach themselves to do such official and proficient art. You, what you do, you read book and then try, you see someone and then try, you no. think and then try? I go and believe when I sleep, God gives me inspiration for everything. Oh, yes, very, very inspirational within itself. Well, we are here at Stony Hill and I'm not certain if your carpenter shop have a name. Does it have a, an official name? So I can say yeah. to someone, go at Stone Hill, at yeah, Lapsa Gate. Lapsa Gate. Oh, I saw Lapsa a, a Gate. post yeah, Lapsa Gate. Um, uh, saying, welcome to Lapsa Gate. So that yeah. is what he is called. Yeah. Good. So officially, we are here at Lapsa Gate in Stone Hill with a veteran carpenter by the name of Foley Prentice. Now, as I look around, I see quite a bit of art. They say a carpenter is as good as the tools he has to work with. I'm very interested. What is this called? A lathe. A lathe. And what does a lathe do? In carpentry. A lathe make anything. You can turn a bowl, you can make wood for a bed. Mm -hmm. Anything you think about, by a lathe. Okay. Now, this caught my eye you instantaneously were. when I came in. Was that designed by you? No, I didn't make oh. that. That made by a wondering. Haitian guy. Okay. What about this make by the owner, Mr. Overcota? It's the owner of who are what? The owner of Lapsa Gate Estate. Oh, the owner of the Lapsa Gate Estate. Yeah. Okay, so how many workers work here? Well, it's just me alone. Sometimes I get a help now and then mm -hmm. when I have too much work. Yes. Yeah. So I ask that because you said the owner did, the, the owner, well, no. he does that as a side work? Side work. As you come home mm -hmm. for holidays, that's the profession. Oh, so he's not um, officially live here okay. on holidays that is job okay understandable now what is this called and what does it do this a lathe this another a, lathe yeah is it a different type of version yeah from this is more for a faster speed mm -hmm. and easier work that's for more bigger oh. piece of wood okay very comprehensible and what do you what do you plan to do with this what can a lathe do with this I'm going to make a glass. So keep you away from drinking out of plastic glass mm -hmm. and metal. Use a wooden glass. 
Okay. Um, Roman, old Roman Haitian in yes. church, use a goblet. So you're going to make a glass from this uh, official drinking glass from, from, from this piece of old kusha wood. Yes. Is this in condition to at least give us some sort of insight as to how it is made? Can we see something turn or spin well, here? Let me turn on this, see what's going on here. Yes. First, we're going to check the speed balance. Yeah. Too much speed, you're going to bounce the lid. Say that so again? Pat. If you have too much speed, you're going to make the lid bounce. Okay. So you got to keep it so at a number. So how do you adjust the speed? What button or buttons you use to adjust the this speed? This is the adjustable button. Okay. So now you could say, you're a little bit off balance. So you yeah. got to make it nice and balanced. Mm -hmm. Watch it. So we pause for a cause here. Yeah. While I ask you a few questions. So as can be seen, I had to get out of the way um, very swiftly because you know a lot of feedback was coming from what you were doing. Isn't it safer to wear goggles? Uh, you have mastered the art of walking this close and not yeah, being injured. See, this wood yes. ain't gonna chop that much at me. Okay. Because you cut an angle. Oh, okay. You don't hold the chisel straight. So what will happen if you hold the, 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 the chisel straight? You more bite in the wood that way. Okay. So it all can give the angle. So it's all about the So act. it's all about the point doing the most of the cutting. Oh. And like I that. observe that Oh I thought one area of was, was, was broader than the next. No. But the, okay. The point is doing the most work the work. Okay. So I observe that you use three different um chisel. What are the various purposes? What is the difference between using this and you had a round head one? This one, this yeah. one. Yes, okay, I was trying to feel, find out which, which is going to cut the best. This oh. is the ball gauge, so this usually make for this. Mm -hmm. This is more harder steel. Yeah. So any danger, this wouldn't work as easy as one of these. Mm -hmm. Because if you catch and your hand will slip down there, mm -hmm. that's going to cause trouble. I believe you. you Definitely. Know, so, Stiff at the iron, it's better for this. Understand. Mm -hmm. And what about another one? Yeah, this one. You see, this one just should try to get the wood in a round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In a round, you know, you go, in a round, you just get, get away from all these little banging. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So, obviously, you haven't um, completed making the, the coppers yet. No. What is the next step? Do you continue, you grind it down, grind it down until it gets much smaller? And yeah, well, then... I, I got to get this in a round to balance. Mm -hmm. Unless this gets balanced, you're going to get that bumping all day. You mm -hmm. got to get this nice and round. Yeah. <coughs> and she started to cut shape here now. Mm -hmm. But here, what she has in touch yet, this oh, yes, area. Yes, you can see yeah, the disparity. Yeah. yeah. So I got to get everything in a one round. Okay. And then I shift it and put a head on here. Okay. I get the gist of the idea of what you um, have to do in order to reach um, the completion of your act. But yeah. my other question is, what other interesting um, equipment you have around here besides... Uh, what you call them again? Lates. The lates. For instance, that's a hundred that big years. wheel looking thing. That's a hundred year advance at a saw. A hundred minutes is a hundred years old? Yeah. Wow. That make from some portion of crazy ears. Mm. Yeah. But this can cut any timber you want to cut. Okay. Via yeah, this just, blade, right? Yeah, just blade, yeah. Okay. And um, is it as simple because I'm seeing all kind of um, gadget looking things, you know, attached to it. Is it operated by simply pushing a single button? Yeah, oh, you, you have to touch yeah, that. The button is right that. there. Oh, so you just touch that button. Yeah, and then then you, that button operator could be 20 mm -hmm. amps to 50. Oh, so the varies. speed, yeah. various speed limits. Okay. So it's very important about the speed. Nice. Okay, very interesting. But the favorite view, when you're cutting timber, you must need a chainsaw. Oh, why? Why is that? Where well, you're going to bring the wood down with. Oh. You want a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. We usually make our own board here. Yeah. Yeah, all these wood. We make these. Mm. Do you believe? This is uh, 
Help me. So, it feels like mahogany. No, the cement. Cement. Oh, it's very solid. That's why I say mahogany. And so what the green features mm -hmm. that you will make the wood sell. Oh, I see. So, speaking about sell, let's get briefly <laughs> into the business aspect of it. Would you say that carpentry is a profitable profession? Is it a profession that you would encourage anyone to get involved in because it um, yeah, the financial gains? Yeah, but my carpentry game mm -hmm. is all about locally. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to the hardware and buy wood to make nothing. Mm -hmm. I prefer go yeah. cut down a tree. So you are telling me that everything in here is made locally. I come and I want this bowl. That would be like $45. And you can't be serious. $45 easy? Easy dollars. Wow. <laughs> Very cheap. You Very can't, cheap. You can't, you can't, you literally can't go wrong um, with a price like this for the type of work that he has to put in. So, something like this, I presume will be uh, more expensive, but yeah. like what, 90 or That'd be like 95. 95. I never finished my money on a flat number. Nice. At this point in time, we'll take our final break and upon returning, we'll go straight into our feature presentation for this evening. Hello, my name is Mamu and I have a very important message for you. Be safe, protect yourself and others. And remember to disinfect services at home and at work. Stay updated by following the Health Promotion Unit on Facebook and Instagram or contact us at 469-8010. The staff and students at the Gingerland Preschool were the proud recipients of a monetary donation from the area representative himself, the Honorable Minister Eric Evelyn. Good morning. We are here at the Gingerland Preschool in the heart of my constituency, St. George Gingerland. And I'm here this morning to pay a short visit, a brief visit to the school and also to make a presentation. I would have made a commitment last year that at the beginning of each school year, I will pay a visit to each of the schools in my constituency. I have already visited the Joystein Library Primary, I have visited the Gingerland Secondary, and now it's a turn of the Gingerland Preschool. And I believe that it is important and it is incumbent on us as government officials to now and again drop in and pay a visit to the schools to show our support and solidarity with the teachers and with the students. I also believe that it is important that as the area representative, the students and the teachers could know who the area representative is. And so I am, believe that it is important that the area representative visit the school. And so I'm delighted to be here at the Gingerland Preschool. I could recall I was here last year and so I will make it my business and my commitment at the beginning of each school year that I pay a visit to the school. Now, I would have done two schools prior to this one, and I would have made a contribution. And so I thought it fitting that now I'm here to visit and to say hello to the lovely innocent students and the wonderful staff here at the Gingerland Preschool that I will also make a contribution as well. So I am delighted as a proud Gingerlander, as the area representative, it has given me great pleasure and honor to make a small donation. I'm going to present a check to Ms. Donnie Lands, who is the um, education officer for the school, in the amount of $700. And I will leave it up to the school to decide what they will do. But I want you to ensure that you buy something that all of the students can benefit from. Whether you're going to buy supplies, whether you're going to buy an appliance for the school, I will leave that up to you. But I'm delighted to be able to make this contribution. And I just want as well to say a very good morning to all of the students. Good morning. How are you all doing today? Are you giving any trouble? 
fantastic. You all are wonderful students. And I want you to continue to obey the teachers and do not give the teachers any trouble. Okay? Remember when you come to school that morning, you're supposed to say good morning, right? And you learn your lesson well. And of course, staff, teachers and staff here at the Gingerland Preschool, I am delighted to be able to visit you. I want to encourage you to continue to do the great work that you're doing with our children. Remember, these are very impressionable minds, and what you do and what you see around them could impact their lives in the future. So continue to do the great work with our men and women of tomorrow. So it now gives me great pleasure to hand over this check to Ms. Donnie Lance. Thank you, Honorable um, Eric Eveling. On behalf of the Ministry and Department of Education, it gives me great pleasure to accept this timely gift. And I know that the supervisor, staff, students, and the parents of the school will make very good use of it, and they will continue to produce great men and women in this, our Gingerland community. Thank you very much, sir. And so now, I present to you Ms. Pamela Elliott, Supervisor of the Gingerland Preschool, this token of appreciation from the Honorable Eric Evelyn, and I trust that it will enhance your school in a very big way. Thank you. On behalf of the staff and student of the Gingerland Preschool, I too want to place on record our sincere gratitude and appreciation to Minister Eric Evelyn on behalf of his timely donation. We want to say thank you very much and we certainly are going to put it to good use. Thank you, Minister Evelyn. All right, you're welcome. All right. <laughs> And that's our package for this evening. I am your host, Remy Gums, bidding you a pleasant night's rest. And remember, tune in next Tuesday for another edition of the Social Development Outlook. Communications United!